thanks for joining this evening it's a sunday evening uh, thanks for taking your time and attending this talk uh, so many of you might have been familiar with devopedia i will brief it devopedia is a platform that is aimed at spreading the knowledge for the developers so uh, it's a platform wherein you can use the platform to expand your knowledge base and at some time in future you can contribute as an author um, you know authoring few articles for us that's the purpose of devopedia please make use of it and about today's talk uh, nidin is going to give us a talk on preference focused text summarization of hotel reviews uh, nidin is an uh, mechanical engineer and a post graduate in uh, uh, machine learning and ai he is right now working with slk softwares as a data science engineer welcome nidin for the talk uh, so uh, we are looking forward to hear a good uh, session from nidin please nidin you want to share your screen and start with your talk okay i hope my screen is visible yes it is visible and uh, people all of you all your mics are uh, allowed whenever you want to uh, you know uh, speak please unmute your mic and speak thanks yeah carry on nidin okay uh, thanks ram for the intro so a warm good afternoon to everyone and my name is nidin so uh, today i'll be presenting on my project personalized hotel review summarization so first of all i would like to uh, thank mr gautam har uh, gautam har uh, who is an assistant professor from uh, amrita vishwavidyam amrita vishwavidyam pidam who has been my guide for me throughout the whole project and also i would like to thank mr ram to introducing me for devopedia and giving me this opportunity and with that i will just uh, start the presentation so uh, first of all th this is part of uh, multiple projects that i have done before and uh, in this project we have developed a new architecture so that is what i'll be presenting today so uh, uh, i would uh, try to um, keep it as simple as possible uh, but i want to keep it i want to just let you guys know that there will be some tech jargons related to machine learning and ai involved so with that i will just uh, start my presentation so uh, the basics of our project is text summarization so first of all i will just start with what is summarization so the basic idea behind summarization is providing a condensed information from a large piece of text that is the basic idea behind text summarization and so a couple of things that we have to keep in mind while summarization is that the summarized text should be smaller than the act previous uh, original text and the second thing is this new summarized text should contain important information which are mentioned in our original text and the third and most important thing is contextually the summarized text text should be in line with the original text so these are some of the important things we have to keep in mind while going for summarization and some practical applications of summarization we see in our daily life are uh, newspaper articles uh, and so if you uh, from our early age itself we can see that the printed news will have a particular summary which explains what the news is about so this is a very common example of summarization and like that we see for online reviews so all of us will be using any of the e-commerce sites so for a particular review from a user we will be given a single line summary of what the review is about and also the same thing can be seen for journals blog sports so and one thing we have to keep in mind is the actual summary may not just be a single line so in if we take in case of a scientific paper the whole summary of the paper can be kept as an abstract so that is multiple lines so it is not just that a summary should be a single line or not that will depend upon the context that we are providing the summary and on that we have basically two kind of summarizations so as a basic we start with extractive summarization so extractive summarization is a very basic uh, step in which the important information from the original text will be taken verbatim to provide a summary so all the words in the so all the words in the summary will be the words which are provided in the original text so we are not understanding the context as per se we are just uh, picking out the most important words uh, which is given in the text and the second method is abstractive summarization so this type of summarization becomes more intuitively and we can say that this is more in line with how us humans interpret text so if someone asks us to read something and ask us to give a summary we won't be saying the summary verbatim 
we will be taking in the context and then we will be able to uh, recreate the summary in our own words which is in uh, which in which the context matches the actual text that we are talking about so for the purpose of this project we will be focusing more on, more on the abstract summarization part and contextually that is what makes most sense when approaching summarization and so this is one of the most uh, prominent examples that we see in our everyday life so you might be thinking like is summary that important so like a is used in many of this field so is summary that important field of ai so this is how we consume news nowadays like if the summary is not good we are not even going to click on the article and read it so something basic as how you consume information is dependent upon summaries so this is a, uh, we have information regarding covid any of these things if the summary is not proper there is no way that we are going and reading the text so this is one very important aspect of summarization and so one thing i want uh, want to mention here is so this is something i've just taken a screenshot from google so this this same summary is what all the people who are reading this news article will be seeing and in the case of new news articles that makes sense because we don't have to personalize the summary because the news is based on something factual and the summary should also be in line with that uh, we can personalize it but then the ethical conundrum of ai comes into play like should we how should we summarize the data should it be the most important uh, piece of information in the text or should it be something that will make people fit the text so that is the something that is a totally different topic coming under the ethical conundrum of ai but for our use case the personalization doesn't make sense here because the news article will be on a particular factual context but coming into our use case so this project is mostly focused upon creating the summary for the specific hotel review use cases so this is something i have taken from tripadvisor so for some hotels in bangalore as you can see here our eyes first take us to the actual summary so we see the summary such as good stay contract wish uh, visit excellent stay at this this hotel but did we get any good information from that uh, summary no we just get some generalized text from that so if you go and uh, read bit into the summary we can see that the first summary says it's a comfortable stay no. so hotel location is good the staff it, the staff is very courteous but that kind of information is not seen in the review so now for get, to get the ex, uh, extra information i had to go and read the review but that doesn't uh, make sense so why are we then providing a summary session so the first process here we do is which is taken care in the in the which is taken care in case of the traditional methods we provide a better summary so in this case the actual summary might be the hotel is uh, the, lo the location is great and the staff are great so this will be the summary which is ob obtained by the traditional models so yes that makes sense but i want to um, uh, take your view in view in an, another uh, part so like i said before all the people seeing this review will be seeing the uh, will be again seeing the actual summary which, which is created now so 1 million people viewing this exact text will be seeing the exact summary but is that the case for hotel summarization so consider that i am a user who only cares about location so i should be shown a summary which contains the information location even if the most important feature in the summary is about the staff so that is where the personalization comes into play we have to so yeah so this is where the personalization comes into play we have a particular review but here we can see that the reviewer such in cares about his price and how good the room is so we show him the information regarding those two features then we go to the user rohit he is also viewing this review but for him he only cares about the location so should should the so the summary should be showing him information which is pertinent to that only really. so we can show additional information but still the location information should be there so this is where the personalization aspects comes into play even for the last user he wants to know information about the staff are they friendly or not is there a bad information there is there a bad rapport with the staff so we have to show him that information in the summary if that is provided in the review so in the review provided here these informations are provided there so this is where the personalization comes into play so in a sense each separate 
person who is reviewing a review will be having a personalized summary to go with it. So just to round it off, the motivation behind this project is that while creating the summary, we are not taking into account the personalization. We are just creating a generalized summary of the review that we are seeing. So in the newspaper article, that makes sense. But in somewhere like a review or a hotel review or even something like uh, Flipkart or Amazon, the personalized review makes sense more. Because like it, now we know, like if you go into something like an Amazon or Flipkart, even the reviews are kind of uh, in two or three paragraphs. So there is no way that we are going to read, read through the whole thing. So that makes customer turn, turn away from our website because he, he has no time to read the whole thing. But if, the, if he is, just sees a summary and he sees that the information he wants is still there, then that will uh, improve the customer experience. And that it, it, this also helps the customer in which he is able, able to make, make very good informed decision based on his preferences. He doesn't have to follow the crowd blindly. He is able to see what he wants to see. And to just uh, give an overview, the problem statement that we are trying to, uh, the problem statement that we are working with for this one is, we are able, we are going to create an AI model which does personalized summarization for that, for the basic one can be converted into two tasks. So our model should be able to provide an apt summary. The summary should be a short text, should be concise, and the context should be correct. On top of that, our some model should also take into account the personalization aspect while creating the summary. So this is the problem statement that we are working with. And then moving on to the steps involved in creating this architecture. So the first step is we have to know what each user cares about. So if you want to create something personalized, if we doesn't, if you don't know what the user cares about, there is no way we can filter out the model. So the first step is we have to identify how the user cares about. And I will be explaining how we does this in the coming slides. And the second one is we have devised a new architecture which takes into account both the summarization and also the personalization. And the final step is uh, the validation of the architecture. We will be providing some test data in the architecture and we will be validating both these hypotheses. Uh, like I said before, this architecture is modeled upon hotel review data set. So for training this data set, we have taken a hotel reviews from TripAdvisor. So we have taken a triplet of data points, namely the user ID, the review and the summary. So the, just the description of the data taken is given here. So we have around 41,000 uh, user reviews here. Or reviews from 41,000 users here. So we have taken three review per user because the data provided doesn't already give us the user aspect. So in the testing phase, we can ask the user what he cares about, but in the training phase, we should know uh, what the user is care about, uh, user cares about. We should be able to uh, get a ground truth. For that, we will be extracting the user's preference from their previous reviews for training purposes. For testing, uh, we, doesn't, we don't want the user with the previous review. We can just ask the user what he cares about. Uh, like I said, so this is just the sample data that we are working with. As I said before, we have the user ID, like Love Traveler, then a review that the user has given and its summary. So this will be your sample data. So yeah, so before I go into the steps, I will uh, just pause for a second. So if someone has any doubt regarding the initialization of our model, I can I'll take some questions now. I hope everyone is unmuted. Yeah. Each of you can unmute yourself uh, if you have a question. Fine. Uh, Nidhi, you carry on. We'll come back to our questions later. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, like I said before, we have three steps. So I'll be explaining the first step here. First step is extracting the personalized keywords. So bear with me here. Why we are doing this will come into play when I show the architecture. So like I will be explaining the steps and you will be able to understand what we are doing here. So the why part comes a bit down. So like I said before, this is part of multiple projects that we have done. So these are three methods that we have devised and uh, so the, the first method is identifying the aspects from fixed words and we were able to see some issues with this method and we developed an another method which is identifying the specific user aspects 
by finding out the similar words. And the third one, like I said before, for testing purposes, we don't want to identify the user actors from the previous text. We can just ask the user to provide a information on what aspect he cares about, and then the modeling will be done on part of that. So I'll be explaining what is happening in the first part, identifying using fixed words. So like I said before, we are working on specifically hotel review data sets. So from previous papers and previous research done, we were able to identify in most of the hotel review cases, mostly six of these attributes are the most important attributes while coming to text summarization in hotels, namely location, service, room, value, facility, and food. So most of the reviews coming under the hotel reviews will be focused upon these aspects. So what we have done for the first step is we have assigned certain words which are which have the similar meaning as uh, the aspect words. So if you look for location, so one word which denotes location is of, of course location. Then traffic also denotes location or the minutes took for the work or where the property is located. Is it noisy? Is it loud? So these are the certain wo words which are associated with the location. So these uh, these words were taken from our base paper and. So the, for the first part, the first pre-processing step is we want to identify which of these aspects the user cares about. Like I said before, if the user cares about location or does he want to know the value. And the second step is for from the actual review, we extract the keywords. And the third step is now that we have, we know that what the user cares about and we know which are the keywords. From this, we do a filtering. So the keywords which are specific to that user is only kept for training purposes. So whichever keyword which is not coming under, if the user cares about location, if the key, if the keywords extracted doesn't contain any uh, words from the location, all those words are dropped. Then only the words which are pertinent to the uh, aspect location is kept as such. So this is how we identify what the each user cares about. So like I said before, for Love Traveler, we have these previous reviews and we keep all the previous reviews to a single purpose. And we find the most 30 commonly used words. So here the principle we are taking is the user will talk more about the, feed, the aspects he cares about. So and from that we are able to, if we, serve, we do a word search, so which words pertaining to whichever location is provided in the top 30 words, then by that we are able to obtain uh, the aspects mentioned here. So as, he, as you can see here, the aspects mentioned here are location, room and facility. So these are the aspects this user cares about. And next step, we'll be using a text rank algorithm to extract the keywords from the review. As you can see here, I don't want to read the whole review, but from the whole review, we are able to extract something like time, minibar, room. So these are the keywords in this review. And this is the final and most important step. Now that we have identified the keywords and also we know the aspects. So from this whole input keyword, now we can do a filtering. So the, this user cares about location, room and facility. So now from the extracted keywords, we only take the keywords which are pertinent to this aspect. So from this, we can see that the location, the room and the room are the only words which are pertinent to this aspect. So this will be taken as an output from here and this will be an input onto our architecture and where that will be used, I will explain in the coming when I explain the architecture. One and second so, before for proceeding further, what is the text rank? Is it a ready-made algorithm? Yeah, it's or a ready-made algorithm. Write? No, okay. it's a ready-made algorithm. In, it is an algorithm provided in a scalar. In Scalar? It's, uh, in, it's, a, it's a library in Python. It's a Python, library in Python. So yes. how the text ranking happens there? How does it find the importance of the word and ranks in the top or bottom? What do you give us the input, basically? Yeah, the input is just the uh, this text, this review. This review will be the input and we will get the keywords as output. Okay, so you don't have to train and all. It is already pre-trained. No, no, the model is already pre-trained. We are not using any other model. So there's okay. an algorithm pre-trained text rank and we are just using that to extract the keywords. That's it. Okay, okay. So there is nothing specific to hotel reviews or anything. It's generalized trained. No, no, yeah. This text rank works for all the text. There's nothing specific to hotel reviews. Okay, and in the next slide, how do you associate the words with the aspects? You 
said uh, yeah you like have said, the, yeah in yeah in this case we are doing a direct word search like like i said before in case of location we have certain words associated with location already given there so just we just do a word search we just search if the words available inside this new keywords are already provided for the aspect uh, like those are hard coded yeah that's those are hard coded like i said this hard coded words okay. yeah this table we just do a word search with this table it's a hard coded set you want to add to this you can yeah. add to this but it's not going yeah. to do anything outside this. okay fine carry yes. on thanks yeah i get your point yeah that was uh, so that is one of the main disadvantage of this approach so i wanted to explain this approach because this is the path we took to reach to the next step so the one very okay. obvious thing is if you don't have the words so like mm. i have given just five words there so there is no uh, surety that the actual five words should come in my keywords so that itself we are losing so many contexts there if the exact words if i look for something next location is locations is provided in the keywords i might lose that word so there is one obvious disadvantage of this model is we are doing a word search so that is where the next so, part comes into play so you have a refined model for that yeah okay carry on thanks yeah so in this part also the first step is we have to assign some words to the uh aspects so in location we are providing some words but we are not providing all the words which are like which i have given before so here what we use is we are not doing a word search so we will be here we will be looking for similar meaning words so here also the first step is uh, similar to what i did uh, said before so for, for each user we will be putting all his or her corpus and we will be finding the top 30 words and the, the next part is where the uh, customization comes into play so we'll be using a library called wordnet which just gives the synonyms for whatever words is provided so if you go back so inside location traffic and noise so we'll be able to provide synonyms for these words so now now itself our corpus becomes a bit large but still the issue persists still we are looking for the same uh, words to uh, mitigate that we will be using a glove embedding here so glove is nothing but how to convert so as you know our uh, computers doesn't recognize words so we have to convert this word to a vector so glove is a type of embedding which converts a particular word to a vector of dimension 50 or 100 or 200 so the models are available for that so what we do here is all of these aspects words we convert that to embedding and then we do a cosine similarity search so what that does is so it takes a dot product cosine similarity of two words and if the cosine similarity score is we kept a threshold of 0.6 if the threshold is above 0.6 we now know that the word are where the word is similar to this aspect so any word similar to location now we will be able to find that out so by just this single step we have expanded our corpus now no longer we are looking for a exact word now we are looking for similar meaning words so this will help much so much more in uh, searching for the exact keywords uh, then example will be shown here so the first step is we'll be identifying the aspects and this is a similar step here we are using a library from gensim to extract the keywords there is not that much difference between gensim and text right we just want to try different things and see how it works so this step is same we just extract the keywords so this is where the difference comes. so now in order to extract the personalized keywords now we are no longer doing a uh, word search now we are looking for the similar sounding words so as you can see here in the previous one we were not able to pick up the bed and no view even though the keywords were provided but now because we are searching for similar sounding meaning the bed kind of uh, is similar to the word room so it's coming under our search right now so this is where the glove embedding uh, plays a huge role so the, in by this way we are able to expand expand our a search to a bigger area and by this so here also we get an output which is a personalized keywords so this output will be taken into our model so i will explain what that's happening here so this is the pre-processing that we'll be doing and the last step is so the obvious question comes next is what if the user has not provided a previous review so for training purposes uh, the data available is with people with previous reviews so we will be trading uh, with, with that data so while we are going for testing uh, 
uh, we, if we want to know the user's preference, we just can give them an option to select. So do you care about, care about location, rooms or facility? So we can give them an option there for testing purposes. But for training, we have sticken to that purpose where the user has to give some previous reviews. And the second step is the architecture. So yeah. So before I show my architecture, so this is the traditional architecture, which is a four sequence to sequence pointer generation network, which is used. So I don't want to work, go into the whole working of this architecture as such. So I just want to show what's happening. And so the one of the reasons why I want to show this is our model is very similar to the traditional architecture. We didn't have to build something from scratch. We just had to in introduce a single component onto this architecture to introduce the whole concept of some personalization. So as you can see here, the red part is the encoder. So I don't want to explain the each working of the part. So why I show this, it will be clear in the next part. So the red part is the encoder and the uh, yellow rectangular part is a decoder. And then we have a contest structure which is passing to the pointer generation architecture network. And then we have the file and distribution. So this is the general architecture, traditional architecture followed. So if I go into our proposed architecture, as I explained before, so what you're seeing here is the left in the left side bottom you have the encoder you have the decoder and then we have the attention architecture and then we have the point generation and then we have the target vocabulary distribution so the only addition that we have done here is we have added a personalized key information guide network so like i said before uh, so we had extracted a personalized keywords as the final output from our pre-process so that final output will be the input onto this architecture. So explaining on the different inputs on the architecture, the encoder will take our actual review as the input and the decoder will take the actual summary as the input and the learning will be happening here. And in that sense, the traditional architecture only has these two inputs. But for our architecture, because we want the personalization, the personalized keywords from this review will be provided as another input onto this personalized key information guided network. And as you can see here, we get a representation K and this information is passed on to both the attention and also the pointer generation networks. So this is where our architecture comes into play. And this will be used to guide both the summarization and also the personalization aspect of our model. So yeah, like uh, if I delve deep into the working of each module, it will be very technical and so many technical jargons. But I believe the uh, basic difference between the traditional ones and the ones we implement is clear with this one. And like I said before, this will be the input onto your architecture. So the first, the personalized keywords from your review. So like we extracted before, location, location, the bed and the bed and the row. So this will be our input. And then the actual review will be going in. And then the actual summary we have from our data set will be going into the decoder. So this is where the learning happens for how the summary should be. So this, we, this is how the training happens in our architecture. And yeah, I'll just uh, go through both these slides. So uh, I, don't, I don't want to go bore you so much by going into what happens on each of the equation. So the uh, link to the archive for the paper which is discussing the attention is given here. So if I think by the end of the presentation, this slide will be shared with all of you guys. So if you want to delve deep into this attention, you can go inside that. So on the left, I we get that we get the contrast structure, which is the output from the attention. So we have just two inputs. So HI represents the input from encoder, which is our review, and ST represents the input from S uh, decoder, which is our summary. So the context structure only depends upon these two inputs. And if you come to our personalized uh, model, you can see that the context structure is formed by not only the encoder and decoder, but also takes information from this personalized key network that we designed. So this K will be the personalized key information representation. So what that does is this uh, provides a much better context on creating the vector. So we know which words have more importance 
pertaining to this user. So that information is added on to the architecture here. And the next one is a pointer generation arc, uh, network. So this pointer generation is used to avoid the out of vocabulary issues while ha happening in the traditional sequence to sequence model. And here we use something called a soft coffee mechanism. And if you want to delve deeper into what happens in the soft coffee mechanism, uh, the paper link is provided here and you can go into that. So I want to just show the difference between the traditional one and the one which we are working with. So in the traditional one, you can see here we are taking the input as a constructor and the input from our decoder and then just a bias. So this is how, how the uh, copy soft copy mechanism will happen. So for a proposed architecture like you saw in the figure, we are taking inputs from the constructor and also the decoder. In addition to both of these, we will be taking an input from the personalized network that we have this, uh, defined now. So while going for the soft copy, the words from the personalized key information will also be used for creating this summary. So like I get that this is getting kind of technical, but I just want to give a whole idea on what the difference is between both the architectures. And I, yeah, that is the main difference while going for architecture. So this is one of the main advantages that we saw while creating this architecture. It's not breaking any of the existing models as such. We are just providing a add-on information to the architecture to make the results better. So any of the traditional methods, it will be very easier for someone uh, trying to break in to include this part on the code. You just have to add one more uh, block mentioned in the architecture. So yeah, so next I'll be going to the results. So before that, if there is any doubt on what I've explained for the architecture, again, I will take some questions now. This pointer architecture, is there a paper and a pre-trained code? Yeah, this is the paper. This is not a, uh, this is just a kind of an idea on the architecture. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of a principle used for uh, getting the out okay. of words. So that algorithm, we are kind of, kind of using an algorithm to get the soft coffee mechanism. So that mechanism is provided in this paper. Okay, okay. And uh, is there a pre-trained uh, weights available for this network? Uh, yeah, pre-trained. To do some transfer learning? You did transfer learning or you did train no, no, it no, from no. Uh, scratch? We, we can train it from scratch. There's no need of uh, transfer learning. We don't have to search for any model. With the only restriction here is the amount of data availability. So if the data is available with you, we, we can do the uh, train from scratch. And this network is available as a library or network also you built it from scratch? Uh, the pointer generation network, uh, the, that algorithm we built it from scratch. The, the code is available in the GitHub repo for this PDF. Okay. They have made, made the code public. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, this is Arvind here. Just a comment or observation. Uh, yes. So you have that original network where you have uh, both the attention mechanism as well as the pointer network. So it's possible, uh, quite possible to tune both these uh, to make it uh, to make the output summary more personalized. But I like the idea where you have decided that it's easier to keep the original network as it is and then introduce a new block just for the personalization. So I think conceptually as well as, you know, in terms of implementation, that is easier to understand. And it's easier also for a lot of other researchers because they are all already familiar with this sequence to sequence with pointer generator network. So the approach you have taken, yeah, I, I can understand why you have done that and why it makes sense. It looks elegant as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the, yeah, yeah, this is actually something we thought of. Uh, like the main reason is that if something is working, we didn't want to break that. So like we know the encoder decoder architecture works better for uh, the summarization. So we also had a thought like if, uh, instead of building a new personalized key information, can we filter something inside the architecture? But the architecture encoder decoder is like almost perfectly working in this condition. So we thought like if it's not broken, if it's not broken, why go and try and fix it? So we just uh, thought of implementing a new one to provide a new in, new input onto that. Yeah, that's a very good. Uh, we also had that thought process going into this. 
Yeah, like I said before, like one thing specific is uh, now whatever I'm showing just because the data is filtered for hotter reviews. So like you said, this will work for only the hotter review. But if like for e-commerce website, if you identify some of the aspects the user wants and then you filter out that kind of data, then this model can also work there. Like we have not gone into that. We, the modeling is now done specific to the hotter reviews. But in future cases, uh, definitely we can take that up. We can uh, pass, it, pass this on to another um, fields, e-commerce, like something like Flipkart or Amazon, that can also be done. Yeah, I think, okay, then yeah, I'll, just, yeah, I'll just proceed with the results. So for summarization, raw score is the uh, evaluation metric that is widely used. So here for raw F score is what we have taken and all the uh, comparison networks are sequence to sequence based networks. So we have, so the, the, the obvious omission here is we have not gone for a transformer network but we have kept this as separate. So whatever comparisons we have done, we have kept that to the sequence to sequence network. And on all the sequence to sequence models, which are pr providing kind of state of that results, our model perform much better in terms of rock score, because we are kind of guiding the summary by providing more input onto the architecture. So by rock score, rock score, the higher the score, the better the model is. So as you can see here, we have achieved better rock score for for our architecture and this uh, like I said before the rock score is just an evaluation of how the summary happens so like I said before for our problem statement we are looking for two fold two fold model we have to take care of the summarization and we have to also take care of the personalization and for taking care of the personalization we don't have any libraries or any other way to uh, check for the effectiveness so the only and available method is human evaluation. So we created, sorry. So we created the new term summaries from the text data, and then we label the summaries to see which aspect is provided. And then we also gave the user information. So this user is looking for these two aspects, and these two aspects are provided in summary. So we had to do an human, human labeling, and that's how we found the position recall and effort score. And from this part also, our model kind of uh, performs better compared to all the other models. So in this model also, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, USN is the only model which is kind of focused upon this personalization aspect. Other models are mostly focused upon this text summarization aspect only. So that is one of the kind of the weird thing that we found when we jumped into this personalization review part. So the, our initial, initial understanding was that we thought, okay, this is kind of mainstream. So many, many research papers will be provided there. But to our surprise, this is not that much a explored field. So if like, someone wants to take it up, I would suggest that this is a very good field because the state of the papers are also not that great. So it's a very much a research on field. So if you want to, uh, if you are able to get a better results, there's a very good chance that it has a very high scope. So like that sense, it's a very good uh, field to delve into if you are looking for NLP. So yeah, from our part, uh, in case of position record and reference score, our model is performing better than all the existing ones. And yeah, these are the, just some of the uh, sample results that I want to show. So I don't think we have enough time for me to read through the whole thing. So I will just share that like for the user one, user one cares about the two aspects, service and location. As you can see here, the review consists of information. So if you can see the third line, it is the location is very comfortable. So the location information is provided inside the summary so that we will be extracting that. So that, that review contains information of location and service. So like I said before, this is abstractive summarization. So we, we don't have to pick the words as such. The summary is like the model will learn the concept and it predict the words which are most suitable for that context. So like I said before, the second user cares about food and value. So they show information, the summary is generated pertinent to that information. And the third user also cares about service value and then the rooms. So the information provided is with regards to these two, these three features. And also the other thing is contextually, they are matching uh, with our uh, review. So just to, 
Okay, and so okay, I'll just okay, I'll just pass to the next one then. So this is also some of the uh, sample reviews. I just kept two reviews till now. So here also, so here also we are uh, like if the review is negative, also we are able to pick that up. So service, so service is there, and the location is not suitable. And as you can see, uh, the second user only cares about food. But even if the user only cares about food, we are like some more information is coming. So like the room information is also coming. So that is one thing we viewed in the results. But for our use case, we want to make sure that the information the user wants is there. It is not that we don't want to include any other information. So if there is some other information also, that's fine. So yeah, this is some kind of some of the uh, results that I want to show you guys. And yeah, so as a conclusion, we put forward our agenda as to create a model for getting the personalization and the summary. And as far as our scope, uh, as far as we were ident able to identify for the experience invention, our model was able to perform better than all the existing architectures in terms of summarization and also the personalization. So we uh, account this to um, the introduction of that personalized key information onto the attention mechanism and also the personalized keywords. So uh, our goal was uh, we achieved, we were able to achieve our goal on completing these two tasks. And yeah, so this is all, it's all, it's not a very perfect model. So one advantage, disadvantage is if we don't have, if we have to train a model with no, no previous review from any user, this architecture, we cannot use the architecture there. So our architecture is built on the uh, inference that for at least training, we need the previous user info. But so if there's a use case in where for even for training data, we don't have any previous user information, then this model is not applicable in that cases. And another disadvantage we saw is that in the examples that I've shown, we are looking for three to four features. So like I said before, in, at a maximum of six or seven uh, aspects are mentioned. So in case the user cares about six to seven aspects, so one thing we saw that the, our model was not able to pick up all of those aspects. So in some cases, if the uh, user cares about location, service, room, facility and everything. So in those cases, maybe only location, room and service were, uh, was picked up. The other two were, were not picked up in many of the cases. So that is one of the disadvantages we saw here. So yeah. And then yeah, something I add on. So a part of this project has been submitted and it has been presented in the third international conference of inventive computation and information technologies. So uh, the, the presentation centers is done. So we are awaiting the online publication from that conference. So the code for this paper will be made public after the, uh, the online publication comes first. It's, it is published in Springer Journal. And okay, yeah, this is just to a heads up of someone who's starting on uh, the summarization aspect. So if you are introduced, if you are uh, invested in learning the sequence sequence learning, there's a very good YouTube video from uh, a YouTuber, Chris Nike, where he, there's a chalk and talk explanation of how everything happens. So how mathematically the computation happens. So that's a very good uh, place to start. And also, as you know, like transformers, it's like, uh, it's a very important part in NLP. So this is also a very good video that I found, which will be very helpful if you want to get started on transformers. And on that, if uh, if you want to look into some articles for transformers, um, I have um, not come across any better article than this uh, Jalamar article to get a intuitive understanding of, understanding of transformers. So this is a very good article. So if you want to just read on what happens in transformers, it's a very good one. And also some of the state of the art models which are used for summarization. So Pegasus and Pegasus, which is from Google and the state of that, which is better fine tuning by reducing representation collapse. This is from Facebook. So both of these are from 2020. The one thing with summarization is uh, the research on summarization is still very much ongoing. So the funny thing is if like some if Pegasus published the paper saying that the paper is state of the art, but by the time the paper get got published, uh, Facebook was able to beat that score. So it's like a very evolving field. So yeah, so this is just the link on where to find the uh, text for this data. 
And if you want to contact me for any of this uh, information on any of the architecture of the code, you can always reach out to me on my email and my LinkedIn. So that information is of given. So yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. And I hope uh, you took away something of value from this presentation. And I hope I was clear in conveying those things. And yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, if there's any doubt questions or uh, any suggestions on the presentation, I'll take those. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, just one question. What is the infrastructure you use to execute this training? Collab. 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 Okay. Collab was sufficient. Yeah, so like uh, we didn't have any uh, other infrastructure, so like Collab had to be sufficient. But like uh, the score, we were able to get the state of the score, scores in Collab itself. So it, okay. it took around, uh, I would say, uh, two and a half months to train the whole thing in Collab using GPT because Collab picks you out after a specific time of uh, uh, GPU usage. I don't, don't mean to say that this model was trained for two months. Uh, okay. But it took around two and a half months. So total hours in training will be close to hundred something. So you did uh, after eight hours training stops. You saved the weights, loaded the weights from that point. Yeah, yeah. after uh, each epoch, we were saving the best weight. Okay, and then okay, got it. Yep, that was nice. Thanks. Okay. People, any questions? You are free to unmute your mic and. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. This is Arvind here. In your uh, results table, you have a Rauj 1, Rauj 2, and uh, one more. What was the third column? It looks like Rogel. the header is. Uh, Rogel. Rogel. Yeah, yeah, this uh, Rogue is a uh, library which is available in Python. PyRogue library is available. We just have to pass the. Actual so summary. Is the third column, what is that? It seems to be duplicated from the first column. Rogue 1, 2, and 3, is it? Not 3, Rogue L. L, okay, okay. It looks like a 1, okay. Uh, Rogue L. Yeah, the other fun. question I had was in your conclusion, I didn't understand fully what you mean by the third statement. The disadvantage is the pipeline is the model requires previous reviews from the user for prediction. But yeah. let's say I am a new user. I, I have not, uh, my review uh, was never present in the training. The model should still work, right? When I give my preference that I am more concerned about, let's say, the location. Shouldn't it give a proper summary because the model is trained? Yes, it will give a proper summary. So I, I think I was not clear uh, in that point. So the issue is not for a per se for prediction. For training, if I don't have your previous summary, then it won't be able to like, like say uh, in the corpus, I have only a single review per user. So the, so like I cannot I identify what is your preferred, uh, uh, preferred aspect. So yeah, like yeah. From multiple uh, reviews only, I will be able to guess, you know, guess I will be able to extract what is a preferred aspect? So if I have just one of your reviews, that is not a proper way to train the model. For prediction, once it is trained, it will work. But for prediction, uh, we need to have multiple reviews from a user. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah, it might be a good idea to include one slide. I mean, for future presentations or even in your paper, some aspect of EDA, exploratory data analysis, because. People would want to know how many reviews per user on average do you have in your data set? Yeah, uh, so that information. How much is good enough? Yeah, like I said before, now we have taken is, I think my slide is visible. At a minimum of three reviews per user, now we have taken. Yeah, this is overall, this is you, uh, you have just divided the two, right? Some uh, reviews divided by users. No, Pop. So like I didn't explain the whole pre-processing step as per se. So one of our pre-processing step is if if this reviewer has given only minimum of three reviews, we have uh, removed him from our data set. Okay, okay, okay. So I didn't explain like uh, I didn't want so to. They should have at least four reviews, something like that. Some threshold you have. Yeah, we have a threshold. Like in pre-processing, we have a threshold. So a couple of threshold. So one threshold is our summary should be more than two words. So if the summary is just good the model cannot learn. So that is one pre-processing. The second yeah. pre-processing is the reviewer has to give more than three reviews. 
So if if one sure. reviewer has given just two, we just uh, take him out of the model. So that is one pre-processing. And then we also made sure that the actual summary on which we are trading contains some information on the aspect. So like we, it can be some, if you go into some, like I said, show the example. So if you see here, it is showing like contract visit that doesn't use any, any context to learn the summarization. But I, we want our model to learn with some context. So like summaries like this are taken out in the learning purpose. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, my last question is uh, about uh, the comment you made that uh, this is still an uh, area of research, tech summarization, particularly, uh, you know, the way you have approached it, uh, you know, summarization, which is focused on user preferences. So one thing I want to point out is uh, there is already a good body of research on what is called aspect-based opinion mining. Yeah. So uh, that is to be uh, that is also used in uh, e-commerce websites and stuff like that. But uh, probably and also there is a uh, body of work on text summarization. But there is not that much work that combines both these into a single model. So that is where I think uh, your comment is valid. Uh, where you uh, take text summarization plus you inject some preferences into that. So that is where uh, you know probably there is a lot of uh, research that is to be done. However, having said that, there is uh, I mean uh, there is one aspect which is uh, go which goes by the name of query focus summarization or yeah. question answering. So those two are uh, you know uh, like subdomains of NLP where there is some uh, good amount of research that has happened. Still, it's a nascent field. A lot of work to, is yet to be done. But there are papers out there. So I just wanted to mention it. Nothing more than that. Yeah, sure. So thank you. So any questions, people? Participants? So we have been clarified. OK, thanks. So if there are no questions. Let's conclude this talk. Uh, thanks, Nidhan. Uh, that was an informational presentation. And uh, thanks for summarizing your research nicely. Uh, whenever uh, your paper and code can be open, uh, please let us know. We'll open it up.